Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Denim and Blazers. I'm with Mr. Curtis Plour. Yeah, what's up, y'all? How y'all <laughs> doing out there in Houston, all around the world? Everybody's, we just love it. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, it is a beautiful day. It's wonderful so day. nice, and it ain't hot. Yeah. It's not too cold. <laughs> Finally, can, you know, today is one of those days you could just wear a t-shirt and maybe a pair of shorts, but it's still kind of chilly, but it, it feels good. It beats yeah. the 90 degree temps, you know. Oh, yeah, stay yeah. in the house with me. <laughs> That's right. But you be in that weather all the time. All the time, is I got to watch. I got to put a hat on his head, uh -huh. and I got to keep myself up, man, you know. Yeah, you know. You know. What I do is I got to keep it going. Yeah, I'm like, that's one of your busiest times when it's... 90 degrees outside. Oh, man, yeah. For some reason, they want you to do it when it's hot. Well, guess what? You know, doing what we do in the music business, it's hot. Yeah. So tell the audience what you do. Well, uh, I'm currently, um, I'm, I'm Curtis Poulard of Curtis mm -hmm. Poulard and Creole Zydeco Band. I am a working musician. That means I do have a job and I uh, I play music too. It's, it's, it's not one of those things that it's on the side. It's I'm for real with it. It's, uh, it's just like my job. It's just as important um, musically and on my job to be um, be relevant, be out there, and uh, to show my face and do what is best needed. Mm -hmm. you, you can tell you like it. Oh, you love man. it. Do I love it. Do I? <laughs> love it. I absolutely love it times 10. Yeah, so that was going to be my next question. So I know you work, but, you know, Zydeco, is that your passion? It is my passion. Music and uh, music as a whole has been my passion all okay. my life. I, I feel like it's been like that since the day I was born. My mom mm -hmm. and dad said I made so much noise in the house with <laughs> pots and pans, or if I hear something on the keyboard, I'm singing it back. Or favorite musician, Michael Jackson, uh -huh. somebody like that. I was always in front of the TV. So mm -hmm. music has always been a passion. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, it was it's therapy, you know, yeah, and so, it is. You know, a lot of times. But yeah, it's it's really, a, really a passionate thing. Um, I wake up with it on my mind. Mm -hmm. I praise God, of course. You know, mm -hmm. some always say we gotta have God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 we do. But sometimes, man, I wake up to a song, a happy song, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. And uh, so music has always been a yeah. passion, whether any type of music. Yeah, well, that's cool. Your music has the power. It, it fluctuates moods, mm -hmm. the, the the climbing in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, you feeling down, happy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm one of those people that listen to Zydeco in the car. Because hey. it, it just Ooh, pump, pump you up. up. Yeah, that yeah. Pump, yeah. That, that beat and that music, man, and... Everything is just get you ready. You might wake up and go, man, I don't feel like doing it. Yeah. Then all of a sudden that song come on and it's on. <laughs> you go to work. <laughs> <laughs> and be on and, so yeah, I, I feel you on that part. Yes. I know you was telling me when you were a kid, you did it, but like what made you get into it professionally? Like what made like what made you make that jump? Well, I used to go to a lot of live shows. My thank God, my parents took me to a lot of concerts. Mm -hmm. and I have family that's in the music business as well, but going to see major artists, um, I would always see myself on stage. You saw it. You know, I I just I loved it. I loved the entertainment part of it. Mm -hmm. I like what they did for the audience. I like the stage props, the the way the band was set up, the way. The singers were set up the way they they would work the stage. Right. Those things I thought were flattering to me. Mm -hmm. Whenever I went to go see live concerts, yeah. and still to this day, um, I've been going doing that on my. I'm still flattered, yeah. even though I might see the same group yeah. ten times. Yeah. You know, it's like I saw them last time, but then they did a little different right. thing this yeah. time. So I'm still flattered, you know, yeah. by things like that. Yeah, that's the um, well, business side of you too, to mm -hmm. even be there and see that. Where right. everybody else is just looking at the show right. and you you literally had paid attention to right. whatever, how it was going, right, right. all of that. You know, another thing I would do, used to do, like my parents, or if I bought a ticket myself, if it's somebody that I really, really, really want to see, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't get that front row seat. I really? Would, I would go up to the top. Why? Because, man, you see everything. 
Everything. So even them hitting the top of the drum, um, everything. Are you um, saying that? That makes sense. I would see like footsteps, like, you know, we would, you know, a group like New Edition. You can see that choreography. Oh, that choreography. I, I was think. you doing the choreography? Oh, I was doing it. I was, <laughs> I was in it to win it. If they needed me to replace somebody, I was there for them, boy. Them boys. <laughs> and I think they know it too, you know. But, uh, I, yeah, you know, just. Like them and uh, you know, just the OJs, the yeah. everybody. Earth Wind and Fire. Yeah. You know, my first concert was Michael Jackson and the in, in the Jackson I never Five. I got to see him. Yeah. And Jackson I Five, would so. love to see Michael in concert. Yeah, they was back during that time of the album Can You Feel It? Can you feel it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, so the, yeah. you know, that 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 uh that was magical as well. Yeah, that would have been an experience. Well, I know that's a great memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Have you figured out the dance between like business and family? Business is family is uh, I'll be real about it. Sometimes, you know, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. It is a challenge, um, but you do you, you love it. You find time, and as long as you communicate with your family, you let your family, you know, they know at times that. They know you have a business. Right. Sometimes it's like, is this the right time to get on the phone? Is it the wrong time to get on the phone? <laughs> is it the right time to email? Is yeah. it the wrong time to email? So you have to balance it out. Uh -huh. And as long as we all have an understanding, mm -hmm. which we all do, mm -hmm. um, in my household, we, we yeah. have an understanding because that's this is what I do. This is, you know, it's, it's part of life. And, um, you know, it's just balancing out everything works right communication works and um you know you just get on the phone take care of your business that's, that's just is what it is it right it is what it is it is it, what it, it is, is, what it, is. Yeah. it helps when you have family too especially you know a spouse partner whoever you have business with if they are supporting even yes. if they help you know because right. sometimes i know business wise i'm so engulfed in business if you want to spend time with me, we're going to have to come in there and help, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. We all got to help. And we got to help. Cause and that, that works. works. You may have a flyer to do and, you know, your spouse may do it for you. Yeah. While you do something else, you know, or you, you know, so it's, it all works. It's, it's all fun. And once, like you say, you get to that understanding, you will never have any other challenges with that. Right. In the yeah. beginning, in the beginning. It does because it's a change. It's something mm -hmm. you're, you're you're starting out doing, and now it turns a little a little curve within the household, so mm -hmm. to speak. And you know now you have to focus on this, and then mm -hmm. you know you there he or she is used to you doing something at a specific time, or right. we were supposed to be somewhere at a specific time, but <laughs> then you had you had to make a quick phone <laughs> call. So you know, but it's it, it it all irons itself out. Yeah between the two yeah i think the biggest thing as long as they know family is your priority they they're yes. okay with it communication yeah communication <laughs> yeah um i love miss malia do oh. you ever deal with dad guilt <laughs> <laughs> Well, she does it sometimes. I'm not. I'm sure there's some people out there would, would sit up here and tell you, "No, I don't deal with that. We all do. It's life." Yeah, it is. She life. loves her daddy. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> life. You know, especially rolling with our shows and mm -hmm. this and that. And Dad, you got another gig? I say, "Yeah, I got another gig, sweetie." Mm -hmm. But when Daddy come home, mm -hmm. guess what? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Yeah. You know, but like I said, it's always after communi communicate with your kids, mm -hmm. you know, and they know what daddy is doing. They know what mom is doing. Um, but, you know, sincerely during the week, sincerely during the weekend, you have a you have days off, mm -hmm. you take care of your business with your family. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You got to be present. You, you got to be present. And. It's not that hard. It's not hard. You know, as a children, you hear that little voice. Mm -hmm. And then when daddy, you, you hear that passion to want to. They you know, want to they spend time with you. They want to spend time. Yeah. But it's also, I, I sit my, my child down and and uh, we talk about it. And, and so surely I go, well, hey, tomorrow mm -hmm. or 
the next couple of days, we're going to do this, we're going to right. do that, we're going to, and it irons itself out, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you just got to be honest with them. Yeah, I always say it's good for them to see work, though. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to see work. Yes. For me, like growing up, my dad was, he was either working at church or if he was sitting still, he was probably reading or studying yeah. something, right? So you kind of knew if you wanted to hang out with him, you better go work, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that would be mm -hmm. cleaning up houses or something like that. But I liked it. And also, I love tennis shoes. So yeah. if I wanted a pair of tennis shoes mm -hmm. and he was heading out, mm -hmm. you knew That's you right. better go. You better go. <laughs> better roll, better roll, better roll. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The, here's the most flattering thing, um, and I don't put it to my head or anything, but yeah. we could be in the store, we could be at our school, mm -hmm. we could be at church, and Malia, our daughter, would say, you know, my daddy's a star. Oh. <laughs> and so I, I just have to roll with it, you yeah. know, um, to hear your, your own child. Um, and she listens to me, she knows all the lyrics to the, yeah. to every song. And to hear her, you know, even when we don't play the CD in the uh -huh. car, sometimes she just come out and just start singing Sing songs it. off the CD. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm so flattered about it, and I'm most was was, I'm so proud about this. What I'm doing is that, you know, we're all gonna leave this earth yeah. at some point, but my daughter have memories of me. You know, yes. I have CDs, I have music out there. She can, she can look me up online. She can. Do all this. She she have all my instruments. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> <laughs> she have all my instruments, you know. So everything I have is for her. Yeah. And so, um, I I you know, she's part of the reason why I do it too because yeah. I, I want I want my family to have long memories. Legacy. 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 That's what yeah. it's about. Legacy. That's it is because it's like you can meet all the people in the world. You can be at all the parties in the world. You can do, but in the end, yeah, the people that's in your home, that's what it boils down to. That's what it boils down to. That's what it boils down to. That's what a love is in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So, um, what's your main mission with your with your company? With your business? My main business with for Curtis Brewer and the Grills Attic Band is to keep going forward, mm -hmm. which is producing more music, um, having to perform everywhere. I'm ready to go overseas. I'm ready to do. This year we went to California. Cool. So we we traveled to California. I uh, want to get around the United States a little bit more, and uh, just keep pleasing the people mm -hmm. because without the people, we won't be where we are. Yeah. And yeah. where we are, you know. So I've been blessed to be in the music in the music business for 19 years, and yeah. it's been a a great 19 years. And uh, there's still a lot of things that we haven't accomplished, but those those days are coming. Mm -hmm. You know, doing so it your way. They're right, doing it my way, and yeah. and we're currently right now working on new music for a new CD. Okay. And so we're like four songs in right now. Awesome. So we're gonna soon be going into the studio mm -hmm. to cut the the new CD. Cool. cool. Yeah. So that's my main mission is to. Keep great music out there for people to listen to. And once you, you know, once you like what you hear, you come to the shows. That's what it's all about. That's right. part of the advertising is the appearance mm -hmm. and your music. So those are the most important things. Yeah, yeah. You know, being from here and family from Louisiana, yeah. a lot of times people don't realize how many other places love Zydeco music. Oh, it's real easy to get caught in a bubble of Yes. You know, Louisiana, Texas. Like, no, yeah. these people love it. It's all over the world. I mean, from London to France to Russia to all over. There's festivals. They got guys right now in Germany that are friends of mine. That really? Are, you know, music business, yeah, in the Zydeco world. That's in Germany right now. Wow. So it's all over the country. You know, mm -hmm. Florida, New York, um, Washington. All over, all over the United States, you name it, it's, it's there. Curtis and your, your crew, y'all gonna be there too. <laughs> we gonna, we gonna be in the mix, we gonna be in the house. That's huh? um, yes, right, when we in the house, we gonna party, we gonna make you party. That's that what it's all about. Train. That <laughs> train. Yeah. Uh, what a 
two frequently asked questions you get regarding the side of her business? Most frequent questions are um, new music. Mm -hmm. Everybody's always looking for new music. Mm -hmm. They always say, man, I love that CD. I love this song. I like that mm -hmm. song. I like this song. But when you going to come out with a new song? When you going to come out with a new CD? It's coming very soon. Working on you it. know, it takes, it's a lot of work to uh, to make a CD. It, mm -hmm. it, it really does. It's a lot of practice. A lot of, um, when you're in the studio, you know, you could have the perfect practice mm -hmm. in your in your practice session. You go to the studio and things something's you know, off. Something's off. Yeah. You know, so you may have to do two or three takes mm -hmm. of the song to figure out which one. And studio takes is money. Yeah. <laughs> it's takes money. Is money. Yeah, it's not cheap. It's not cheap yeah. at all. It's not cheap. It, it's a it's a costly business, yeah. you know, but um like I said, it's uh, it's well worth it, mm -hmm. you know. So you go in there, and you go in the studio, you mm -hmm. you cut each song, and you, you mix it, master it, and then you get ready for distribution, mm -hmm. which is uh, now you have all the outlets um, like uh, uh, digital, all the digital outlets right. um, that that we have that's out now. Um, I forget them. Uh, which one do we have? Um, what do you mean, like Pandora? Pandora, yes, that's right, that's right. I had a lot. Apple I've got music. Apple yeah. Music, that's but, right. So, but you having the blank, though, brings me like to my next question. Mm -hmm. Because, like, being creative, how do you balance your creativeness and then the business of it? Because sometimes the business part can just suck all the creative juices out of it. So I would assume, tell me if I'm wrong, that's part of why it can take some time before you put something out. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I have to get up. Sometimes I wake up 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, a song hit me, uh -huh. and I got to either get on the guitar, uh -huh. get on the accordion, or just do the vocals, write down the vocals. You know, I have the melody in my head. Uh -huh. You know, I take it with me on my way to work. Uh -huh. You know, I record it, you know, and then I come back home and do what I have to do as far as what instrument I want to pick up first right. to, 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 to get that song down. So, you know, in the midst of uh, creating music and then the business part, it all throughout the day, some kind of way, uh -huh. <laughs> it comes together. That's awesome. It's, it, it, it's like, it, it just, I don't know. It I can't even hardly even explain it. Yeah. Because like I say, I'll wake up to it or it'd be in, in the middle of the day. Uh -huh. I could be riding somewhere and I'll start singing something. It just hits you. And then it hits me and I I store it in my brain as, as best as I can. Uh -huh. If I don't at that point can't record it on uh -huh. my phone or whatever. And I'll just take it with me, hold on to it. When I get back home, uh -huh. I try to do something with it okay. music wise. But as far as getting from A to Z, that's one no one really can explain because, you, like I said, I'll wake up 2 o'clock in the morning and I'll, I'll start it. I'll take it with me to work Yeah. in my brain and uh -huh. in my phone. And then by the end of the day, I have it. Wow. That's a gift, though. Yeah, I, I just... Thank God for that gift. Yeah, that's a gift. That's a gift. <laughs> I, I just, uh, I, that's one you, I just can't, it, it just happens, man. Do you remember the first time you heard your song on the radio? Ooh. Like, I'm just sitting here thinking about that concept of it was a thought in your mind. And you go through the process of turning that thought into a song. And then all the little bit in between the business part and then the note that you wrote that part through. Because most people, it's the endurance of it mm. to make something happen, That's you right. know. And then to finally have that moment where it's like, right. what? <laughs> yeah, that that is an awesome feeling. Yeah. I mean, to hear yourself on the radio, to hear your production, to hear your, your brand mm -hmm. on the radio, that is awesome. Um, that's another one that is just like a baby being born. Yeah. Your first child being born. Yeah. It's like, 
it's that type of feeling that it's like I, okay, I it's like, it. my goodness, I can't believe what I just heard. Yeah. You know, and um, it's it's amazing that that that's just hard work pays off at yeah. that point. Yeah. At that point, it's just. It's just pure joy. You want to pop mm -hmm. the cork and drink some wine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's celebrating that, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that that would have to be a cool feeling. You know, like just being a creative with something and to see it manifest yeah. and then to see people enjoying it. Yeah. Something that all started three yeah. in the morning. You know? Yeah, I've even had a, it's, it's just where. I was in a studio probably nine songs in and I didn't have a song. Really? But you know you want to have maybe 10 to 12, 13 songs on a CD. Right. Like my last CD had 12. Okay. Uh, but like I remember at one point I was like nine songs in and the producer was like, so when are you coming back? I'm like, uh, I'll be back next week. Mm -hmm. And then I have a song. But at that point, you know, you're tired, you're wore out, and it's like uh, something might come up, or somebody might say something. And it sticks with you. And it hits you, and then there your song is right there. Yeah. The topic is, is, comes up, and then you, you roll with it. So a lot of times, you run out of things, and all of a sudden, something that come up, comes. and yeah. there it is. I have a few songs like that on my last CD that I wrote in a couple of days, and Got the music done a couple of days and went to the studio. And, and those were the songs the on the on the CD. I'm like, that one is the one. This one is the one. Uh -huh. That one is the one. The ones that you made up within a matter of minutes. Yeah, it was the one that everybody requested when you had the gig. Didn't even. It was just meant. It was just meant. And then I would thank you. But all, all along, you going. I know this song is a hit. Mm -hmm. I know this song is a great. Uh -huh. one. I, but they requested the ones that you, you thought that one that that you felt like you know it was good. You like you like the song. You record right. the song. Yeah. You you know you like it. You, you know I re, I don't record stuff and don't like it. Right. I, it is. I I love my music uh, and everything. But the one that you go, I, you know that one's gonna grow on some people because I did a little twist and turns on this song. Yeah. You know, but that's the one. Yeah. And you wouldn't even think so. <laughs> then, then you cross your mind. Then cross my mind. I know when I see you play, I love to see the older couples waltz together. Mm -hmm. And then it's just something about that, you know. It's a, I mean, it's a little different than what, but just when you see that connection that's happening, right. and then they might be waltzing. Then the next thing you know, you see the husband, he ready to show out and turn. <laughs> and yeah. she just keep her step and keep moving with him. Yeah. But you know, like it is cool to see that and to know that something you're doing yes. with your hands makes people have that feeling. Hands and voice, because you think, yeah. you know, I'm like, it's just nothing was there. Yeah. And then now it's there. Yes. Yeah. And well, it's moving a space. Yeah, the waltz is very important within the Creole culture. Mm -hmm. I feel, and not only that I feel, um, I've heard the older generation mm -hmm. say, if you had to play the waltz within your <laughs> dance, you, you didn't you, you didn't play a zydeco. Yeah, you it's didn't play supposed zydeco. to be part of it. It's part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I like about the waltz, it brings the people together. You dance yes, closer. Yeah. You'll be able to hug your wife better, hug your husband. Yeah. And you'll be able to dance. A lot of that is missing. The you connection. Know, even in the R and B world, you don't see you go to the club, you don't see nobody slow dragging them on. No, they twerking. Yeah. <laughs> they twerking. I be saying I can twerk. I can't twerk. I ain't doing never moving. I definitely can't twerk. <laughs> And they ain't gonna too, try to twerk. Too old to be twerking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, yeah. you're right. That connection, you don't see yeah. people embrace. Right, yeah. and that's that's an important part that uh, a lot of people miss out on. Um, I'm gonna be for real. Sometimes I do a waltz, and some people frown up at it. Really? Don't you get yes? Like, I can't look. dance, but I love to see people right. dance. Like, you just see it at that moment. That man is, like, into his life. You yes, know what yes. I mean? And she's following mm -hmm. him, yeah. you know. And yeah. you see it. It's a whole different. I love right. to see it. Yeah, I want the. Uh, these got to get back. I, I don't. 
I'm not trying to be old school, but yeah, the slow drag, the the waltzes, the things that bring the couples together. We, we that we gotta bring that back. That's yeah. what's missing in the world. People not being able to. So come you used to walk up to your wife and your husband. Oh, that's my favorite song. Let's go slow drag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you know that that's not happening these days. Yeah. So um, it is important. For the culture to mm -hmm. I do it because traditionally culturally that's what fits within the culture right I will continue to do that I do do the up and date current stuff I mm -hmm. do that but I also tie in um, what really uh, started this genre right. of music together so it, it's original it's just like making a gumbo you know, you gotta you have that. Too, even though I ain't had none. We'll be all pretty on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's that type of weather. It's time for some uh, gumbo now, We gotta, we gotta make some smooth. Let's tell she be getting smooth. Like, <laughs> ah, that ain't looking good. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. That's right. Um. So, how can the audience keep up with your dates and stuff? Yeah, I have a website. My website is www.curtispoolard.com. Poolard is spelled. P is in Paul, O-U-L-L-A-R-D. So a lot of people, you know, they sometimes they get that pool order, right? Sometimes they Man, get it wrong. That's right. That's so you that, win now. <laughs> they'll take a letter. They might take a one L out. It's with two L's. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you get in touch with me. Um, my cell number, in case you want to book us, or if you have any questions about the music or anything, uh, merchandise, CDs, or whatever, you can call me at... 281-451-3254. It is, again, one more time, 281-451-3254. That's how you can reach Curtis Poulard of Curtis Poulard and the Creoles. I go bad. Yes. So, um, you going to show me something with this the squeeze box you got up here? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was letting everybody, you know, in case you want to know. This is an accordion. We call it a squeeze box. Some call it, uh, I did, it's an accordion, a tin button, tin button, uh, diatonic, uh, accordion. I love the colors on and, this one. Yeah, I really do love it. It's, uh, it's a master accordion maker in Louisiana that made it, Martin Accordions. Um, there are a lot of, a lot of accordion makers mm -hmm. that are really, really talented out there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, this is the instrument that we played during the gig and um, mm -hmm. let me get my strap I'm sorry I go ahead I don't mind I don't, I don't like free that. concert <laughs> you know so yeah yeah so I'm gonna give y'all a little sneak peek on what we do and um, you know it's such a pleasure to be interview today yes thank you for lovely lady right thank here you. Well, thank you thank you for um love it is sean sean van de pool is the real deal y'all yes yes so um this is what we do this those to see you got a crawfish on there so, you know, a so don't take my car don't think you can take my car and put in some hot water because you see a crawfish on it Crawfish this crawfish will not turn red, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Like Sean was saying about the pool, I train, it goes like this is. Come on, ride. Pool on train. Come on, ride. Pool on train.
beats inside just like in the um just like in the harmonica. Wow. Like when you blow on a harmonica, mm -hmm. there's reeds that go, you know, that, that vibrate. Okay. So as I'm pushing in and out, the wind is going in and out. So with the flappers, mm -hmm. you're able to produce wow. the sound. This is one of my favorite. I love the colors, you know. Mm -hmm. Finally got my name on that accordion too, Curtis Blood. And he has a crawfish yeah, in that too. Got a crawfish on it, so it's one of my favorites and um, I, I love it. That's cool, I'm excited, yay. Yes. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thank you, Mr. Curtis Poulard. What a great interview. Thank you so much, Sean. It's, Thank you. Uh, it's all good, and you keep up the good work as well. And Thank you. Thank you. We're just going to keep on striving and keep on rolling. That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all next time on Denim and Blazers. Please, y'all. Peace. <laughs>So I just have a couple of questions for you guys. First of all, are you homeowners? Um, I'm not. I'm. That's my fiance. I am. No. I am. Yeah. No. Are you homeowners? Yes. Yeah. As far as you understand, what is the current down payment required to buy a home? It just depends on who you go with, really. Probably twenty to thirty percent. I don't even know. No idea. I have none. Okay. Uh, Twelve hundred. Uh, five percent of the mortgage amount. Um, I think it's ten percent, right? What is the current down payment required to buy a home? Um, ten percent down is the lowest. Um, like ten percent. Depends on the kind of loan, yes. right? Yeah. I don't even know what the current down payment would be. Five thousand. Twenty percent. Twenty percent, or better if you if you can do it. Um, 20%? 20%? I mean 10 to 20%. 20% is usually what is required to get a home in the Bay Area where I live. My understanding is 20%, that's what I put down. So. Um, I think the standard down payment is 20%. There seems to be some confusion, so let's just clear things up. 87% of non-homeowners believe a down payment of 10 to 20% is required to purchase a house. But there are several programs which require a much smaller down payment, even as low as 3%. Homeownership might be more in reach than you think. Check with your real estate agent and academy loan officer to find out how much or how little you need to put down to get into a house of your own.